please remain standing. At this time, I'd like us to take a moment of silence to recognize law enforcement officers that have fallen in the line of duty. You may be seated. <clears throat> well, first of all, happy pre-Mother's Day as we get prepared for Mother's Day on Sunday. Um, I want to welcome all, all our guests uh, here today, family and friends, um, uh, colleagues that, will be, that our graduates be, will be working with uh, over the next throughout their career. Uh, I also want to take a moment to welcome all the chiefs here who are representing the different departments of our uh, students. I'm uh, super excited about that. My name is Ross Perkins, and I am currently serve as the director of the Public Safety Institute, and I stepped in about a week and a half ago uh, as the interim director for the Police Academy. And this is an honor to be up here to recognize uh, these students and the success that they've had this semester. Today is going to be a day of celebration, not only for our graduates, but for our families. The commitment and time that it takes to go through this, the long days, the weekends, the nights, the travel, you persevered. And I want to commend you on that and welcome you to our family. Chief Madugo of the Fire uh, Academy mentioned something to me uh, earlier this semester, and it was, a, it was a quote that he had that he really liked and, and it really resonated with me and I want to just kind of end with that quote. Um, it said, in this family, and what I mean by that is this Public Safety Institute family, no one stands alone. You are a part of this family and we're here to support you no matter what. And you're always welcome back, okay? At this time, I'd like to introduce uh, welcome up Dr. Susan Moreland. She is the Director of the Public Safety, Education, and Transportation Division. She has a few things she would like to share with you. Let's welcome Dr. Susan Moreland. Hello, graduates, distinguished guests, friends, and family. It's an absolute privilege and honor to serve as the Academic Dean for the most amazing Public Safety Institute and amazing Police Academy program. This is my eighth ceremony this week, 
This is the last one, saving the best for last. So super thrilled to be here. Thank you. First and foremost, I would like to take a minute to recognize some of our distinguished guests from Ames Community College who has joined us today. As I call your name, would you kindly stand up and wave your hand in the air? I'd like to introduce you to Ames Community College Chief Marketing and Communication Officer, Zach McFarlane. Ames Community College Vice President of Academic Affairs, Dr. David Ayler. Board President of Ames Community College Foundation, Diane Homburg. Board Member of the Ames Community College Foundation, Bev Peratino. And my colleague from the School of Business and Technology, Dr. Jim Vernon. I'd like to also recognize our Ames Community College Foundation Development Officer, uh, Jordan Wagner, who's also an alumni of Ames. Thank you, we're delighted to have you here today. Graduates, you've been through a lot together and today we are here to celebrate you and everything you did to get here. We appreciate that you chose Ames Community College to help you with your educational and professional journey with us. And we hope you'll come back because we have a bachelor's of science, or bachelor's of science in public safety. And at $82 a credit, you're not gonna beat it. So uh, I sure hope I'm putting a plug in because it's a really sweet deal and it's an excellent program. And we'll probably have our first grads next spring. I think we have three to five grads uh, next spring. So I'm hoping you will all come back. As a former 20 year veteran of the United States Air Force and a former comrade in uniform, I personally wanted to congratulate each and every one of you for a job well done and wish you good luck in all your future endeavors. I also wanted you to remember me in case I'm caught speeding and maybe you can let me go with a warning. That was inside voice, but I put it down anyway. Lastly, again, I would be remiss not to rec um, recognize all of the wonderful and beautiful mothers who are here today. I would like to wish you a very special Mother's Day tomorrow. Thank you. I will now ask Director Ross Perkins back up to the podium. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Moreland. So before I invite our guest speaker up today, I just had a few things that I wanted to make sure that I recognize some very important folks uh, that are a part of this academy and really have impacted the lives of these students. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to recognize Clay Fuller, the lead instructor for the academy. Clay, could you stand up for a second so they know who you are? But Clay can't do it by himself, that's for sure. With, I don't even know how many assistant instructors, part-time instructors there are that support this. Uh, I would like to have all of the assistant and part-time instructors stand up if you're in here. I know uh, there's a couple in the back there. Please stand up if you help with this academy this semester. Let's give them a big round of applause. They do an amazing job and it's so fun to watch them do their scenarios here, um, whether it's out at our new Sim City, whether it's in the hallways or the stairwells or wherever it is, uh, it's amazing to see them uh, transform from day one to just this past week, uh, watching them be successful. Uh, and so that is a testament to the incredible instructors that we have here at this academy. So I don't have a lot to say about Matt Turner. I just met him about 15 minutes ago. Um, but Matt is the captain of Well County Sheriff's Office, and he said he would introduce himself, so I'm going to allow him to do that. Welcome Matt Turner from the Well County Sheriff's Office. Now, Ross, I'm going to need your help, because I have the memory of a goldfish, and I will walk away with this thing okay. on. So okay. yeah, I'm happy to be here today. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much for the invitation. Um, one of the reasons I'm happy to be here is because in 2012, I graduated from this academy. 
this campus does not exist. Um, a, lot of the, a lot of the stuff you guys have around here was not around. Um, so I'm so happy that they have built this to what it is today. You guys have done an amazing job. My name is Matt Turner, and I'm currently serving as one of the captains at the Well County Sheriff's Office. And before I start talking about who I am and why I'm here, I want to do something, and I need your help. So I'm going to take a picture. If everyone could just smile for me. All right, I'm going to take a couple here, make sure I get everybody. That picture is going to come in later, but also, I never dreamed in my life that I would be listed in a pamphlet as the keynote speaker anywhere except something like really bad about don't do what I did. Um, I'm happy that's not this situation. So, so why am I here? I don't know. I don't know. I'm nobody special. And I tell you what, I don't feel special on a daily basis, but what you are entering into today the end of this academy and what you're about to go into is special. And because of that, you are all special people. You're special people because it's hard to be in law enforcement these days. You're special people because it's a difficult job. But you're special people because you want to support the communities that you live in. And for that right there, I have a bond with you that you, you can't break it. So a long time ago, I graduated high school. I'm not going to say what year because I don't feel like doing that right now. But when I graduated high school, I wanted to be one of two things, an FBI agent or a rock star. Now, let me clarify, I had a blue mohawk. I had a white Randy Rhodes Jackson guitar, uh, black pinstripes, gold inlays. It was great. Uh, I still have the guitar. The mohawk is very much out of policy, so I don't have that anymore. Um, but as I started my journey to figure out who I am and what I wanted to be, I ran into a lot of motivational issues. I had started college, I was studying accounting and business. Um, I ran into financial issues, motivational issues. I found myself dropping out of college the first time and I joined the military. One thing you get out of the military is time to think. So in the military I thought about what I wanted to be when I grew up and I wanted to be a teacher. So as I transitioned out of the military, I did a tour of duty in the, in the active army and another one in the, in the National Guard. Um, as I transitioned out of that, I started school again. I got my associate's degree, but I also started growing my family. And I realized that it's very hard to support a family on a teacher's wage. At that time, my brother-in-law was going to this academy, and he said, Matt, you should jump in, knock out the academy, become a cop. You'd slide right in because of your military experience. So I did. I started this academy not knowing what I was getting into. Some of you have been in some type of the profession, so you know a little bit about it. But some of you guys may not know what you're getting into. It's awesome. Sometimes it's hard, but it's awesome. I completed the academy, and toward the end of it, throughout the academy, you guys have instructors from everywhere coming and teach you. Um, back then, none of us were sponsored. There were no uniforms at graduation. And we had a question of every single person who came in, because we were very nervous about one thing. What does the polygraph look like? What does a lie detector test look like? It's a nerve wracking thing no matter what. But I decided I was gonna apply somewhere just so I could see what the application process looked like and hopefully get to the polygraph section so I could tell all my buddies what that was like. So I applied with the Will County Sheriff's Office and the next thing I knew I was being offered a job. Because I had post, working at the Sheriff's Office, no door has ever been closed to me. I've had so much opportunity. In 2019, so I started with the Sheriff's Office in 2012. In 2019, the Sheriff made me a captain. Now that's not an instant jump. There's so much that happened in between that time. Um, I had the opportunity to serve as a lieutenant in the jail, a sergeant on both patrol and the jail. I was a corporal, I was the, pu the public information officer. So I dealt with the media and marketing the agency. And then in the jail, I got to be an FTO, a firearms instructor, and so many other things that helped lead me to where I am now. When I was made captain of the jail, I was so nervous. I was in charge of over 300 people. There were 600 inmates. And again, I'm nobody special. I didn't really know what I was doing. But we have a team of people every day that help us accomplish that mission. Today, I'm in charge of about 50 people. I'm in charge of the administrative division. And every day I come into work, I am energized to be here. And I say that because before I started working for the sheriff's office, I jumped jobs after getting out of the military. And one of those jobs, I did, I did retail. I worked for Walmart. I worked for Walmart while I was getting my associate's degree. 
And every day was Groundhog Day. Every day I went to work, I stocked cheese, I went to class in the morning, tried to stay awake in class, I went home, I went to sleep, I woke up, I stocked cheese. There was something missing there. And what I learned very quickly was that being in the military gave me this connection to public service and a hunger for public service that stocking cheese did not fulfill. Just didn't work. Don't get me wrong, nothing against retail. There's plenty of people who work retail and I think it's a very important job, but it wasn't for me. Today, when I get out of bed, when my alarm goes off in the morning, I am energized. I wake up quickly, I get ready, I go hit the gym, I go to work, I am ready to do my job and I'm happy to be there. But it's because of what the job is, not the fact that I work for the sheriff's office. So I talked a little bit about the opportunity that I've been giving in, given in the sheriff's office to get me to where I am now. And it is full of opportunity and all of you have that same opportunity. What I want to talk about today is how you take advantage of that opportunity and how you guide your career in a way that allows you to be the very best you can be every single day. So I talk about this topic whenever one of our, well, I, sh I shouldn't say that anymore. I talk about this topic whenever possible, but many times it's to our new academies in the jail. But today I want to talk about family, but in a different way for you guys. So family means a lot to me. Um, my first job was working with my dad. I worked with my dad at the Marriott Hotel in Fort Collins. Now, I didn't work alongside him. He worked in another area. But my dad gave me some very sincere advice the first day that I went to work. He said, don't screw up. Which seems so short, but it meant so much. It meant so much because my dad still works for the Marriott Hotel. He's going to retire in about four years. He has built a name for himself there. And it's the name that I have on my chest right now, Turner. If I messed up at the Marriott, his name was attached to that. So he really wanted me to do well because he endorsed me for that job and he didn't want to see me get in any trouble there that people would say, hey, what's your kid doing, right? So every day at work, I tried to work very hard and I thought if my dad was standing right here watching what I'm doing, what would he think? We have that same ability. The agency that you work for, the agency that you're going to work for, is going to give you a badge, just like this. But this badge doesn't dictate how you work. You do. So remember that even though you're working for a law enforcement agency and they've given you a badge, they can't give you one thing that you bring with you, and that's your name. You're going to put that on your uniform. People are going to know you. In, in 50 years, no one's going to say, you know, the captain at the Will County Sheriff's Office in 2024 did this thing. They're going to say, Matt Turner did this thing, and I get to choose whether that's a good or a bad thing. I get to choose whether that makes my name look good or if it doesn't, right? So, where I want to make it a little special for you guys, if you would, please work with me on this, would you all stand and turn around and face the crowd? All the graduates, not everybody, sorry. That would look weird if everyone's facing the back. So find your favorite family member. Just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> find your family, right? But also what I want you to recognize as you look at your family and realize that you are taking them every day to work with you. Look at the network of families that are here today. It's not one family. It's not one family. It is a network of families. The public safety family, the law enforcement family, is a network of families and it's huge. Graduates, you can have a seat. That picture that I took earlier, I'm gonna get that to my guys and they're gonna text it out to all of you, that way you can have that picture. Because I want you to rem remember, looking out on this crowd, who all was here today. It's a network of families. So as you work every single day, imagine that this network is at work with you, looking at the decisions you make and wondering, is that the right decision for my family or for my network of families. Two more topics, then I will step off the stage. How do you be successful at work? I'm reading a book right now by Bear Grylls called Mind Fuel. Bear Grylls is an outdoorsman. He does a lot of really loony stuff outside, um, puts himself in danger every single, every single time he goes out and films. In this book, he talks about a terrain feature that he hates crossing every time he has to get to it, and that's a river. 
When you're crossing a river in the wilderness, you never know what's beneath the water. All you see is the surface. And there's resistance there. And they say that six, six inches of water moving quickly can kill a person. There's resistance in that water, no matter how deep it is. So Bear Grylls says, as you set your goal to get across that river, never aim straight across. Aim upriver. If you aim upriver, all that resistance is going to hit you, right? But if you're walking diagonally, you're going to shoot past your goal no matter what. In life, in your careers, set high goals. Any goal you set is going to come with resistance. And if you set a very high goal, as you hit that resistance, you may not hit your original goal, but you're still going to come way above the threshold of a low goal. If you just set minimum standards for yourself, you're always just going to make minimum standards or below. But if you set high goals, you're always going to be above those minimum standards. And then the final thing, I hope every single one of you sitting in these seats right now does more than just be a, a, a line level street cop. I really do. We talked about it earlier. There are chiefs in this room. There are captains, lieutenants in this room. Every single one of them started out where you are. Set high goals. But when you attain that level, I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. When you become a leader, put your rank on last. As you put your uniform together, put your rank on last, put your name on first. Because again, every single day, if you go in leading with your family, leading with your name, you are going to be amazing people here. I am so happy that I got to talk to all of you. I really tried to keep it brief. Anyone who knows me knows that I can talk all day. But being able to talk at a graduation for the academy that I started in 13 years ago, to me, that, that feels full circle, and I'm so happy to be here. So proud and happy for all of you. Congratulations, and I'm going to get off the stage. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much to Captain Turner for those words. And it's amazing. We had our fire academy graduation a couple hours ago in this one, and the messages were very similar. So I'm glad to hear that. So I'm going to invite Clay Fuller up. He's going to talk about the academy and kind of what happened this year. Good afternoon, I'm Clay Fuller. I'm one of the lead instructors here. Um, I am the one, your family members came home tired and grumpy, that's on me. I'm not the one who had all the fun classes. I'm the one who had a lot of the required classes. And we made them work. Your family members got more than 30 college credit hours in one semester. In other words, a double load. Nothing I could have done in college. That would have cut into skiing and drinking beer and never would have happened. I couldn't have done it. They all worked very hard. They earned everything they got. You guys worked hard, trained hard, and I think you're ready now to get the real training. You're going to have fun. You're going to meet your training officers. You're going to go on the street. Life is going to be wonderful. It's amazing. Let us know if we should have done something better. Let us know if we did something right, okay? But you guys are gonna have a lot of fun. Mostly what I would like to tell you, if you don't already know this, and you probably do, I'm just proud to know your family. I'm proud to know all these individuals who decided, they raised their hand and said, I'm gonna do that, what other people are afraid to. I'm gonna go where no one else wants to go. When I call for help or my family calls for help, they're going to come as fast as they can get there. When other people are running away from danger, they're going to run towards it. You and all your brothers and sisters out there today, wearing the uniform or out of uniform, here or on the streets, you're joining great people. Okay? People may annoy you sometimes, but when your life's in danger, your family's life's in danger, you and all your brothers and sisters are going to come as fast as they can get there to help doing that which others do not want to do or afraid to do. So we are just very proud to know you. I am very proud to know each and every one of you. You did great. You're going to do great things.
Don't go too far. So I'm going to ask any of the assistant instructors, anybody who helped, if they want to come over here to the right-hand side of the stage, because we're going to go ahead and do our coining ceremony. So, what's it? It's only my second week. No. So I want to just make a comment before we get started. You'll see some of our students, graduates, that are in uniform. Uh, they are with their department. They were hired through their department. Uh, and then you'll see um, some students that are dressed up, and that means that they are not with the department yet, but will be probably very soon. Uh, so they're in the process. So I just want to recognize that difference. So if you're like, why is he not wearing a suit or why is he wearing a uniform and things? So I just wanted to make that clear to everybody. All right. Graduates, when uh, I call your names, please come up and uh, you can shake hands and walk up. Do you want them to come all the way up or line yes, up? Sir. Okay. Yep. Let's go ahead and line up. And we didn't get a chance to practice this because of the other graduation. So we're going to get everybody lined up here. Ian Brogatti. <laughs> Jacob Clark. Joanna Espinoza Gerardo. Corey Fleming. Wyatt Ham. Kimberly Yalls. Grant Hawkins. Grant is not here today, but we wanted to recognize him. Spencer Hogan. Noah Shane Ivy. <laughs> Mark Landusky. Christopher McFarland. <laughs> 
Clinton May. Joshua Netterbrunt. <laughs> Jordan Rick. Anthony Sierra Manella. Dominic Teeterton. <laughs> Jacob Tripp. Katie Vallerman. Nicholas Wells. I'd like for us all to give all the graduates a round of applause and recognition. And I'm gonna ask the uh, assistant instructors and part-time instructors to stand right there because we've got some awards coming up here. Uh, typically, at this point of the ceremony, uh, the graduates would come up here and give a, uh, a gift to the instructors and things, but they did that earlier this week, and it was a beautiful wooden flag that they, I believe, all signed. Uh, it is in uh, Professor uh, Fuller's uh, office, which is beautiful. I saw that the other day, and I was a little bit jealous, but that's okay. Maybe next time. Uh, it is a beautiful, uh, and this is just a, a testament to the dedication that not only uh, Professor Fuller has, but also all the instructors and things. Um, so thank you very much for that. So now we're going to do some Academy Awards. So these are awards that 
uh, recognize some of the outstanding students uh, in the academy in a couple of different areas. So we're going to start with the skills area for the academy. And the skills areas consist of driving, arrest control, and firearms. And so these recognize the, the best performers in those areas. And so I want to go ahead and take that opportunity. So this is for top driver. This will be Wyatt Ham. We had to make an executive decision here. So the next two awards are for Top Shot Award and Top Arrest Control Award. And this is won by the same person. So we're just going to do two for one here. And that is Jordan Reek. So not only do they have to learn all these skills and, you know, in driving, shooting, and uh, arrest control, they also have to perform academically. Uh, and so our next one is for outstanding academic achievement, and this goes to Clinton May. All right, our last award, and I want to just take a moment to recognize uh, the former director, Brian Mix, who was a director uh, throughout this academy and got these, these cadets going and everything. So I want to recognize the incredible work that Brian did during this time. And so this is the director's overall award, uh, and this will go to Jacob Tripp. Finally, I would like to have all the graduates stand up real quick, one last time. And let's give them a round of applause one more time. This concludes our ceremony. Uh, just to let you know, we have some cake and some things out in the hallway. Plenty of places to go take pictures and celebrate. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day and a wonderful Mother's Day to all the mothers out there.